One of the most far-reaching powers of the American president is to appoint federal judges. One of the most important duties of the United States senator is to hear and consider to confirm such federal judges. Both duties are conferred by the United States Constitution. Both duties have become increasingly controversial in our era of national culture wars. As a United States Senator, what would you look for in a nominee to be a federal judge or a United States Supreme Court Justice? Would you have any litmus test or any one overriding issue such as flag burning, school prayer, reproductive rights, same-sex marriage, just to name a few easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pollard, we begin three minutes. Thank you very much for that question, Mr. Um, yes, that's a very, uh, one of the most significant responsibilities of the United States Senator is the confirmation or not of, of uh, federal judges. Um, and it would be wonderful if I were to have that responsibility. It would be great. <laughs> um, I would welcome it and embrace it. And um, I do not have one single litmus test. No, I, I, I have a conscience which is very clear, and I am very clear communication with my conscience. Um, and, well, it feels like I said it's clear. I should say it is also clear. Um, uh, I'm a little stumbling up here, but um, anyway, I um, as far as I I I I listen to my conscience about is this someone who has through his or her record made sound judgments in accordance with um, general interpretation of the Constitution, and, and in some cases I guess it may have to be my interpretation um, if if it's if I feel that a judge has made. Um, decisions that I think are not in keeping with the Constitution, then I would, would not support confirming that, that judge. Um, now, flag burning or school prayer, neither of those are ones that a position one way or another would keep me from appointing uh, justice. Um, and actually, no, none of the ones that he listed, would, I would look at the entire um, uh, package, the whole list, the whole body of decision making and see if this person had, in my judgment, exercised sound judgment and kept to the original intent. I, I would become a more knowledgeable scholar of the Constitution through this responsibility and would consult with and read the uh, reviews of the Constitution of, of, um, of the leading scholars in the nation. Uh, I do feel like we, we have gotten away from it. And, and I did mention President Lincoln as a, as a hero. He did really begin the, the power of the central government at, at another level. And, and I do feel personally um, strongly that that a federalist, that we need to return to the federal democracy that we're by um, founders. Um, other than that, I think I have nothing further to add. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Uh, in rotation. The next person to answer that question on national policy would be Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Representative Adams, for the question about the importance of the role of the Senate in confirming appointments of the President to the federal bench. Uh, this is probably one of the most important things that the Senate does do because it, it influences the entire makeup, creation, and conduct of, of the third branch of government, the judicial branch. I think it's incredibly important to make sure that when considering a nominee, that you consider the body of their work, read their decisions. And what I would look for in that, in that study is a, really a pattern of thought that is not results-oriented. All the issues that you enumerated, Representative Adams, some of the flashpoints of today, the, the fact of the matter is that probably everyone in this room Probably nobody who is not an attorney has spent more time in court than I am. I grew up 
I'm in the family of a small business, and sometimes there was some court action here and there. And I grew up in mortal fear of ever being sued. And yet, as Secretary of State, I think I was sued, on average, uh, 1.2 times per business day. <laughs> and I spent a lot of time in the state Supreme Court, uh, and federal court. You, make, you take a stand, you make decisions, and people want some resolution uh, to a third party. And what I've learned from watching our judges in action, I tell school children this, that if you ever lose faith in the system, go to the Supreme Court and listen to oral arguments. It's truly magnificent. Because I have had my entire career in my hands at stake based on what these outcomes are going to look like. And I would look for, in, a, in the temperament of a judicial nominee, I want somebody who has a strong sense of the rule of law. I want somebody who's not looking for a particular result in the pattern of their decision making, but nonetheless looks for guidance from the law and the Constitution and renders their decisions thusly. Uh, so I, I'm not, I don't want anybody who is results-based. I don't, I don't agree with the phrase judicial activism. I want judges to be active. I want them to be vigorous. I want them to debate among themselves the merits of law. And that's what I would look for in, a, in the potential Supreme Court justice or a justice at any level of the federal bench, because that is truly a tremendous resource for the people to go for recourse. And I want to make sure that the people that are sitting on that bench are conducting themselves with the interest of the law and the Constitution and the interest of the people at heart, regardless of what their political bent is, regardless of what their philosophy is. That history is demonstrable in their previous decisions and writings, and that's what I would look for, considering whether I support a presidential appointment to the federal bench. Thank you, Mr. Dunlap. And in rotation, Ms. Dill, three minutes on the federal bench question. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I mentioned in my earlier remarks that I, uh, by profession, am a trial attorney, and I, and I practice in federal court, and so my experience as a young lawyer was to litigate cases in federal court and before I was in politics, and we have some fabulous federal judges. One in particular who's now retired is um, Judge T. Carter. And it never even dawned on me what his political orientation was. It just seemed that he was fair-minded, incredibly tough, and expected a lot of attorneys. And I uh, am just grateful to him for really raising the bar. And I think in Maine, we have really great judges. And again, it, it doesn't really dawn on me what their political <coughs> orientation is. Um, I would also just note that um, uh, since we're here and there's TV, I would like to congratulate a constituent of mine, Will Kayata, William Kayata, who was uh, nominated to serve on the appellate court. And I think he will do a fine job. And he, in my mind, is an example of what we need um, in our, our judges, um, and those qualities include incredible uh, high levels of thought and critical thinking, um, unblemished integrity, um, compassion, uh, clearly a record of um, working on complicated issues and resolving them in a way that moves uh, America forward. Um, I would say in my experience on the Judiciary Committee in the State Senate and as a state representative, we confirm judicial appointments that um, the governor makes. And um, there's been a few that have been um, divided committee reports. I, actually, I can only think of one. Um, but for the most part, uh, a similar review is conducted. Um, you, you look for judicial temperament. You look for uh, a record of um, very high um, achieving examples of um, committed work and not necessarily um, political orientation. That being said, I do think that there's a difference between federal trial judges and United States Supreme Court justices. I think a trial judge needs to have critical skills. You're there, you're the fact finder, or excuse me, boy, the fact finder on the bench case, but you're there um, managing a trial. Often these trials are very sophisticated, and you need to have um, just a certain skill set, the rules of evidence, etc. The Supreme Court level, there is some politics involved, and I would review someone's uh, history very carefully because I want someone who isn't coming into the position with um, an overly restrictive view of the Constitution. Uh, I would not want someone who thinks that the Constitution has to be read literally 
um, interpreted as a, a was <coughs> adopted hundreds of years ago. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Mr. Hink, rotation for the uh, federal bench question, three minutes. Thank you, Representative Adams. I think it's all been said, but I'll, I'll, I'll pick up. Yes, the U.S. Senate plays a, a key role in constitutionally, uh, I think it's advice and consent on judicial nominations. Uh, something's gone wrong in Washington in that uh, playing that role. Uh, too many judicial nominations have been held up so that we actually have vacancies all over the federal courts. Uh, the result of filibusters and uh, an attitude that no president of an opposing party is going to get their judicial nominees through. That's wrong. What should they be doing? They need to approve judges who are qualified, um, who have the proper judicial temperament, who are dedicated to the rule of law and respectable politics. Uh, in the last year, we've seen uh, uh, filibusters of a Ninth Circuit judge, Judge Liu, who was eminently qualified, and, uh, and uh, few reasons were given for preventing him from taking the bench. He withdrew his name and has since been nominated and, and, uh, and taken a seat on the California Supreme Court. There was a Third Circuit judge also who was filibustered. Uh, these are the circuit courts. Uh, very critical level just below the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, many more uh, such uh, problems have arisen in the district courts. Uh, how do we uh, keep from having our own prejudices enter into the decision making? The United States needs to go back to allowing judges to take their seat if they're qualified and don't necessarily agree with everything that each member agrees with. I will tell you that um, I'd be very concerned if a judge's history included uh, disrespect for fundamental rights. There are certain principles set forth in the Constitution that I think are bedrock. Um, there are probably other ways in which prior interpretations uh, would make me question whether the judge could truly be qualified. But uh, I think it's important sometimes to, uh, to yield and uh, recognize that you may not have chosen the judge that's before you, but nonetheless, uh, it's uh, up to you to make this country move forward, to make the judiciary work, to allow a nomination to go forward. That's the kind of senator I would like to be. Thank you. Thank you. In rotation, 